Hi, and welcome to the next video in our debt monitoring series. In this video, we're going to cover step five of the configuration wizard, and we're going to dive into all the bits and pieces of that. Take about four or five minutes. Here you go. Okay, we're going to pick up right where we left off from the previous video. We're on step four, and we're going to hit next, and it's going to get us into step five. So this is the last step, and you could skip it. You could not configure anything in here, but it is definitely in your advantage to understand how this step works and to use it to the best of your ability. So one of the things that we can define, there's three things actually that we can define in here. One is host groups, one is service groups, and then one is the parent host. So we're talking about host groups, service groups, and the parent-child relationship. All of these are important when we start to look at the big picture of monitoring your entire environment. So you can see in our host groups here that we have a Linux server group, we've got a switches group, we've got a printers group. This way, um, you know, there are other features like when you go to do reporting later that you'll be able to have those groups, you'll be able to report by groups such as Linux servers. You could have a group like Windows desktops and then you could report by those groups. It comes in handy. So um, you're going to want to define those. Same thing with service groups, and then the same thing with parent-child relationship. So how do you get there? How do you do it? How do you configure those? I mean, in yours, when you first show up, you know, all these things are going to be blank. So we're going to go back to the core config manager like we did last video. And here, Instead of going to the alerting, we're going to be in monitoring, and here's host groups, and here's service groups. So let's take a look at host groups. Here you can see the host groups that we have already previously defined. This is our demo machine. You can add a new host group, and the new host group name could be, you know, it could be Windows Workstations. And you can fill out the rest of that. And then you can manage who's in the group, who's not in the group, it's a good thing to have. You'll definitely want to use this step. Okay. Additionally, we can uh, take a look at service groups. Sometimes it, you know, there are a lot of times people need to monitor by service group. That they want to take a look at groups of CPUs, and we can compare the performance of CPUs across or groups of RAM. And you know, it's maybe less important when we're talking about Windows workstations, but it could be extremely important when we're talking about you know, storage performance uh, or overall performance uh, on machines on a hypervisor, those sorts of things. So those are going to be useful. The last thing we're going to talk about is parent-child relationship. And here's how that works. Okay, so we are back into step five. We looked at host groups up here and we looked at service groups, and now we're gonna talk about the parent-child relationship. This will save you a lot of headaches if you get it set up correctly. When you first get there, you know, you won't have anything filled in here, not like we have it here. You can choose something that will be called, and usually it's just one thing, you'll see, you know, typically only one host is specified as parent. You can choose a parent host for the host that you're configuring. Here's why that can super help you. If we go and we look at a network map, here is a network map that we have set up. Right in the center here, this is the Nagios process. So that is, from this standpoint, that's how Nagios sees the rest of the network. Over here, we've got, you know, we've got the office backbone and we've got a firewall. If the firewall goes down, if the, you know, like the power cuts or there's something wrong with it, we've got all these things over here that are behind the firewall. If the firewall's down, those are unreachable. Now, if we don't define the firewall as the parent host of these things back here, what'll happen is Nagios won't be able to reach them um, and it's gonna start sending alerts that says, hey, it's unreachable. But when we define the firewall as the parent host of these hosts out here, once the firewall goes down, then Nagios knows that the other items are unreachable and it's not going to alert you on it. Now that's important because if the firewall went down and you started getting alerts, you would be getting 
you know, 15 alerts a minute on stuff that isn't necessarily down. You don't know that it's down, but you know that it's unreachable. So it's a great piece of logic and it's gonna take you a little time to just sort of figure out how you want your network organized in that way, but I'm telling you it will pay off in the end. My friends, that is the end of the beginning part of the Get Monitoring series. The videos that come after this cover advanced topics, but from here, you're ready to go. You apply what you learned to the other object types in your network, whether those are Linux servers, whether those are switches and routers, or they're Windows servers, whatever that is, you now know enough to get monitoring on those. Stay with us for the next video in the series on advanced topics in configuration management. Thanks so much.